There are more humans trapped in slavery today than any other time in history. It makes you think, why the media, most of them, and also some people in Hollywood, do not want to talk about this? More than one in five victims of sex trafficking are children. By some estimates, 4.8 million people are trapped or forced into sexual exploitation globally. Ask yourself, why don't they want us to see it? What are they hiding? This video is going to open your eyes to the truth. What you need to do is decide whether you want to live in the truth or in a made up false world where evil controls what you think and believe. Let me give you an example. The movie The Sound of Freedom is an amazing film by Angel Studios and is based on a true story of child sex trafficking. It's about Tim Ballard, a federal agent, played by Jim Caviezel, who decided to quit his job and leave his pension in order to save innocent little children used as sex slaves. Now, after you've watched this powerful, amazing movie, it gives you the following facts. There are more humans trapped in slavery today than any other time in history including when slavery was legal. Millions of these slaves are children. Human trafficking is a $150 billion a year industry. This is insane. Just so you have an idea of how big an industry this is. Coca-Cola, they're across the whole globe, right? They only have around 40 billion a year. That's how much they make. And then when you look at McDonald's, they have around 20 billion a year. 150 billion industry, that's trafficking. And the US is one of the top destinations for human trafficking and is among the largest consumers of child sex. This is sickening. The US is one of the top destinations in the world for trafficking. It makes you think, why the media, most of them, and also some people in Hollywood, do not want to talk about this? And if they do, they're negative about this. They want to discredit this movie. Why? Ask yourself. Because no rational human being with good values, good morals will be against this. Unless they agree with what is happening. They want it to happen and they themselves are hiding something. Watch this. These films are created out of moral panics. They're created out of bogus statistics. They're created out of fear. And with something like Sound of Freedom, it specifically is looking at QAnon concepts of these child trafficking rings that are run by the high-level elites. Here's how the media received it. Washington Post, Sound of Freedom is a box office hit whose star embraces QAnon. Rolling Stone, Sound of Freedom is a superhero movie for dads with brain worms. The Guardian, Sound of Freedom, the QAnon-adjacent thriller seducing America. For some reason, the entire media is smearing this movie as a dangerous conspiracy theory. The press is saying that the star, Jim Caviezel, is a QAnon guy. And Jim plays Tim Ballard, which is strange because just a few years ago, the same media was celebrating Tim Ballard's heroics. Watch. Tim Ballard has one mission to track down child traffickers. Four months ago, Colombian authorities asked him to investigate a tip that children were being sold there as sex slaves. Within a half hour, this individual walks up to me, starts asking me what I'm here for, what I want, and within m minutes, he says, well, I've got, I've got kids as young as 11 years old. As I said, we, none of us heard of this movie, and you would have only heard of this movie if you are a regular among church groups, or you regularly watch Fox News, or you follow right-wing personalities like Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson and the like, or you are a QAnon conspiracy theorist, or part of the so-called freedom <laughs> movements. Like... This movie is a powerful movie that is showing you the truth of what has happened, what is happening, and what will continue to happen if we don't do anything about this. And the media had that to say? They're showing their true colors. You need to stop supporting these kind of people. There are powerful people behind the scenes controlling 
certain media groups, certain people in Hollywood, and they don't want you to know the truth. And you know, Tim spoke to the Senate years ago. Watch this. For the last five years, as Chairman Graham mentioned, I served as the founder and CEO of the anti-trafficking organization Operation Underground Railroad, working hand in hand with law enforcement in 20 countries, including 22 states in this country, Operation Underground Railroad has rescued over 2,000 victims and assisted in the arrest of over 1,000 traffickers and pedophiles. Much of my work has been based on simple economics. The United States is one of the highest, if not the highest, consumers of child pornography in the world. We are the demand for child sex. As such, traffickers around the world seek to bring children to the United States where they can sell them for sex and make a lot of money. My number one personal and professional goal has been to keep these children out of the hands of these sick American pedophiles. I want to share one case in which we failed to do this. The victim was a foreign-born child around 12 years old who we will call Lily. Lily was kidnapped south of the border. She was then taken along with several other children her age and smuggled into the United States, not through a port of entry, but rather through a, port of, through a part of the southern border without significant barriers or a wall, Lily's traffickers easily transported her to New York City, where she was raped between 30 and 40 times a day, and this is not atypical at all for a case like this. She believes that she alone was raped over 20,000 times between the age of 13 and 17 right here in our country. Shame on them. Shame on those people who did it and shame on those people out there right now who are trying to discredit what happened. Who are trying to discredit this movie that's built on truth, on facts. And you know, three years ago, Hollywood rejected this movie. They didn't want you to see this. Listen to the producer. Did you expect this kind of response? It has been a, a groundswell across America. Uh, just react to what the last two weeks have been like with your uh, amazing film. Of course, of course not. I mean, uh, we spent eight years of our lives in putting this movie together. And I never imagined, especially when you finished the film uh, almost three years ago, and then you were knocking doors everywhere, and all the experts in Hollywood told us that this is not a good film for them, that nobody will, nobody will go and see this film. So after three years of uh, rejection, you have two options. Either you give up or you don't give up, and which you know we choose the second one. And after praying to God for a miracle to happen for this film, please send an angel to rescue this film. Angel Studios rescue this film, and because of then millions of people are seeing this film in these ten days, more than five million people show up in theaters, and I, I I can't believe that this is happening. This is like I feel like I'm dreaming. Evil is working behind the scenes, and you know they've been working in the entertainment industry for a long time now. Just look back these last few decades. Just look at how much the entertainment industry has changed. Think about what your kids are watching today compared to what you watched when you grew up. It's because through entertainment, they know that they can influence people, especially young, innocent minds as vulnerable. They want to change what people are thinking about life itself, what the new normal is. And you know, there are good people out there with good values, good morals that, that has great shows, but they don't want it out there. They want to control what people see so that it can control what they think. You know, I, I was very sad because uh, I wanted to come out in theaters three years ago and it was not happening. And then maybe a year later, okay, this is the time now and nothing happened. And of course, I was sad. My investors were calling me, Eduardo, what's going on? A lot of pressure from all my investors. I have a lot of investors, a lot of people that believe in this project. And now I'm responsible. I'm the producer. I'm calling Alejandro, the director, and he's calling me every day. What's going on? What's going on? And I'm just bleeding because I, I, I show the film to the people and the people cry. The people, you know, they stand innovations, but the experts are saying, no, this is not for us. So of course, of course, you get confused because you don't know really what, what do you have in your hands. But you know what? When you are waking up every day and you know that you're using your talents, your projects to save lives, you know what? You can stay 20 years, 40 years for that one child 
because that's that's the exercise that I do every mm. day. I close my eyes every day in the morning. What if this is my son? What if my daughter is missing? What would I do? I will stop everything that I'm doing and I will give my life to, to find my child. Well, that's my motivation. I'm waking up every day to fight for, for children, to end child trafficking. I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait for this tragedy to come to my life for me to wake up. I want to wake up now. A lot of you need to wake up right now. And maybe this movie can start this whole movement because there are secret societies and evil is working within them and through them. In B corporations, governments, school systems, social media companies, and certain news media. They didn't want this movie to get out there in the first place. And now that it is out there, they can't stop it. But still, they are trying to. They're trying to discredit it. Ask yourself, why? Why don't they want you to see this movie? I mean, this is the worst kind of evil. Little children, innocent children. Ask yourself, why don't they want us to see it? What are they hiding? Media, Hollywood, those secret societies. Watch this. Elijah Wood's shocking allegations against the entertainment industry. In a new interview with the Sunday Times, the former child star alleges that pedophilia has been a real issue in Hollywood. He tells the publication, quote, There are a lot of vipers in this industry, people who only have their own interests in mind. What bums me about these situations is that the victims can't speak as loudly as the people in power. That's the tragedy of attempting to reveal what is happening to innocent people. They can be squashed, but their lives have been irreparably damaged. But there is Hollywood's other dirty secret that victimizes the most vulnerable, children. And someone who's spoken out about this and is painfully aware is former child star Corey Feldman. You freeze, you're, you're in shock. I mean, children aren't supposed to handle that sort of stuff. I can tell you that the number one problem in Hollywood was and is and always will be pedophilia. Nobody talks about pedophilia. It's the big secret. And it's widespread? Oh yeah, I was surrounded by them. And Jeff asked whether Weinstein's behavior was an open secret in Hollywood. I think there was knowledge amongst a certain group of people, mostly who did business with, with, with Harvey Weinstein. There are countless women who understood that that's what happened, and there were many people who said, well, that's just Harvey being Harvey. How serious is it? Is it about one person, one man, or is it a, a culture? You and I, and even the likes of the people on the Turner Classic movies, understand that the idea of the casting couch that existed in Hollywood is the part of both myth and concrete reality. They would go to the auditions and so forth to try to pick the ones that they wanted. At one point, he said, uh, you, you know what, why don't you just take off your clothes? Take off your clothes and let me see what you look like. You've seen their faces. One alleged victim had roles in What's Eating Gilbert Grape and The Apostle. Another is an aspiring musician who was violated when he was just 11 years old. Meet Evan Henze. He is just one of five telling their stories in the documentary An Open Secret. The 21-year-old says he was abused for five years by his manager, Marty Weiss, who was convicted for his sex crimes on Evan in 2012. Do you remember that first time? Yeah, yeah, I do. What happened? We went to the park and we played basketball. So it was that night he touched me. At 11, I didn't know it was improper. It just didn't make any sense to me. But Evan may not be the only one. The manager also allegedly abused the late Corey Haim and Corey Feldman. Feldman told us it didn't end there. When I look back at a picture of when I was 15 years old and I was surrounded by five men and every one of those men in that photograph is a pedophile, that's a pretty big problem. I was molested and I said yes. I allowed it to happen, but I was a child. I was told that this is everyday business and he made me feel like I have to do that in order to get any job. He was just saying oh, this was common in the industry. He said, oh, if you have sex with me, then we'll go to SeaWorld the next day. When did you finally decide, I have to tell someone? At 18. 
I tape recorded an hour long conversation and I asked him straightforward, why did you abuse me? And, and how did he respond? He responded and said that you were coming on to me at 12. There is an evil sickness within these secret societies, working within them and through them. It comes straight from the devil who wants to cause as much pain and suffering in this temporary world while he still has time. These people, they worship the devil, their father. John 8 verse 44, you are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character. For he is a liar and the father of lies. <sighs> you know, my heart goes out to all the victims, especially the children, even your children being brainwashed in schools, through the media and through the entertainment the things they watch and the games they play. And also these children who are being trafficked, millions of them. These are innocent little children. <gasps> this is sick. This is evil, pure evil. And you know, these pedophiles are smiling because a lot of people out there, part of the media, Hollywood, are trying to discredit this movie and they're laughing. Tim Ballard joins me now. So Tim, why is the media hating this movie? You know, I can't understand it. The film was made, produced, written like five years, six years ago, way before anyone heard the name QAnon. I still don't even know what QAnon is. Uh, in the meantime, they're trying to connect it to some conspiracy when in fact, like you said, this is a true story. These are real kids. I mean, I'm, I, these kids are my friends. They're young adults now, the ones that were rescued. They're going to come out soon and tell their story. It's going to be very awkward when the mainstream media comes after these kids next and accuses them of being part of some conspiracy when, in fact, they were rescued from a life of rape. It's, it's, it's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen in the media, perhaps. I mean, this publication says The Sound of Freedom is a superhero movie for dads with brain worms and that it fetishizes the torture of its child victims. Is that what the movie does? It absolutely does not do that. It tells a story based in truth. And, you know, I, what I think is happening, Jesse, I think that the left and the, these, these media outlets, they don't want to have a discussion that this film is going to compel. A discussion about why 85,000 children showed up unaccompanied at the border and got released into the interior of a country that is uh, the highest consuming country for child exploitation material on the planet. They don't want to talk about why they, these same publications are pushing an agenda to change the word pedophile to minor attracted persons in order to normalize sexual activity with children. I think that's what they're trying to avoid. And they know this film's going to shine a light on all of the things, all the atrocities happening in children. And so they have to discredit it by lying about it. These people are evil. No wonder they're trying to spread lies to discredit this movie. But you know what? They cannot stop God. You know, God is light and He shines His light on darkness, on the evil. And it is coming to light. And look what He did through Tim Ballard. It is amazing saving these children. Listen to what the producer said. You know, you know what I think? why this is uh, touching so many hearts, because there's millions of people praying for this film. I believe in the power of prayer, and a lot of people are praying for this film, so this film can touch hearts, so this, this movie can put pressure in government. So government, once and for all, I hope that they will do something, because they have the power to end this, especially in America. You have Absolutely. the most powerful country in the world. You have the money, the technology, the army, the intelligence, everything. How come we don't finish this problem? Because it's not a priority. You know, we need to support and pray for projects like this. They need our help. So share it far and wide with everyone. And you can pay it forward. If you have the money, then you can pay it forward so that other people can go and watch it. So that they can go and claim their free ticket online. We need to overcome evil with good. We need your help. Because there will always be people, evil, who want to stop this.
For example, the Washington Post said, QAnon and Sound of Freedom both rely on tired Hollywood tropes. And Forbes said, the adrenochrome conspiracy theory pushed by Sound of Freedom star explained. You know, it's the same thing over and over. They use the same things. Whenever you want to speak the truth, they label you. Or, oh, it's a conspiracy theory. Man, aren't you getting tired of this? Here is Tim Ballard's own response. If the truth of human trafficking and child trafficking and child explo exploitation were to be uh, br brought to bear, brought to light, then they would have to have a debate, a discussion that they don't want to have about, again, these policies around sexualizing children or allowing children to consent at a young age to do anything and everything, uh, which would eventually include being, you know, identifying as an adult, perhaps, and having sex with pedophiles. I hunt pedophiles. I've been hunting them for 20 years, and they are watching this, and they're salivating. They are happy that Rolling Stones and The Guardian are ripping on a movie that exposes them. So I don't like the fact that these media outlets are, in fact, wittingly or unwittingly, running interference for human traffickers and pedophiles. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You know, they should apologize to all these kids who were rescued. They should apologize to them. And they should apologize to all these people who rescued their lives to tell their story. I mean, it, it, it's, it's amazing. I mean, uh, what can I say? You know, I'm just so grateful. These guys are lying, but somehow because of their lies, people are waking up. So they're helping us. I mean, the, 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 the numbers are showing up that, you know, um, we're doing good. So yeah. whatever they're doing, hey, keep doing. Because of your lies, people who love truth now they're responding. But this, but you know, they should apologize because it's not fair. These guys are, are lying. These are the mainstream liberal media who they don't care about children. They don't care about saving children. They don't care about anything. They care about just themselves. And perhaps maybe some of them, I, I don't know. I don't have the evidence, but it's really weird. It's suspicious that someone doesn't want this film to be seen by mm -hmm. many. A film that is designed to save children and, and they're blocking. Maybe they're involved in the crime. Maybe, maybe they are the pedophiles. Maybe this is the guys who are hurting these children. I don't know, you know, go figure. You need to be very careful and not listen just blindly and follow what the media is saying and what celebrities are saying in Hollywood. They are controlled by people, so they're just spewing lies. You need to understand this. Just because they're celebrities doesn't mean that they have some special knowledge or they're something special. They're just human beings like you and me. You need to follow the truth and stick to the truth because it is only the truth that will set you free. And if you know the truth, it is easy to discern when someone is telling a lie, trying to control how you view the world. The devil is working hard behind the scenes. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Now the devil and his demons are in this temporary world and they're doing their best to bring out the most evil acts of us human beings because of our sinful flesh. So they bring the worst of our sinful flesh out and it causes so much pain and suffering. And yes, they are in the world and they are gonna do what they're gonna do. But that doesn't mean that you should just sit back and do nothing because then evil will take over. And good men like you and me sit in our comfort zones and do nothing. God is looking for good men and women to stand up, to say, here I am, use me, to shine light on darkness, on evil, to overcome evil with good is looking for people who will do it through the spirit because we know if we're acting through the spirit, then we'll act within the will of God and we will have no fear because the word of God says that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and self-control. And that is what Tim did. He raised his hand and he overcame evil with good. And I want you to listen to this, to what Jim Caviezel said on the Daily Wire while he sat next to Tim. And one of the things that hit me for the screenplay was it was very biblical to me in the fact where you have a guy that literally um, 
goes and, and finds this little boy and a little boy just asks him from Homeland Security, asks him, hey, you know, gets, get, gets information, but the little boy asks him, hey, will you save my sister? And he has to make a decision. And that's where we are as a country right now. Can you, what kind of decision would you make if God came to you? We ask God and pray all the time, but God does come to us and ask us, here it is. What are you going to do about it? And so Tim, essentially with the help of his wife, sold everything he had to go and find this little girl. And I know there are many stories in the Bible uh, about stories like this. The rare, rare, this, this, uh, this uh, Ms. Rojas, I, I keep bringing this up. Ms. Ms. Rojas on April 26 gives sworn testimony, okay, in front of the House Committee and, and, and says that we are, uh, uh, 850,000 children have gone missing, right? 850, next day in the media, nothing. And this continually happens all the time. Why does that continue to happen? And you feel like there's some sort of criminal syndicate going on here. And I'm praying that a lot of these guys that are in these three letter agencies, a lot of these young guys that know a lot will come forward and start telling the truth. And this film has the power that you feel in your heart, okay? That, that I'm not afraid of evil. I'm not afraid of evil anymore. I'm going to go out and I'm going to do the right thing, come hell or high water. Now, there is a fight between good and evil. And there is a line being drawn into sand that is becoming more clearer every day. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say something that's going to be shocking to you. But I, I need you to listen. Because evil is out there working in the world. But it might also be working in you. If you watch pornography, hear me out. You might not have a sex slave, but the porn industry does use sex slaves. A lot of them underage. And if you continue to watch porn, you are helping these people, evil people, to stay in business. According to humantraffickingsearch.org, traffickers can sell sexual photos of the women in addition to forcing them into prostitution at a great financial gain. And the younger the girls, the more expensive the photos, making the underground child pornography industry one of the most lucrative markets for sex traffickers. According to Fight the New Drug, by some estimates, 4.8 million people are trapped or forced into sexual exploitation globally. More than one in five victims of sex trafficking are children. Of domestic minor trafficking victims who had been forced into porn production, the average age they began being filmed was 12.8 years old. Man, you know, I'm, I'm shaking here. This is just pure evil. In one survey, 63% of underage sex trafficking victims said they had been advertised or sold online. Do you get it? It's about demand and supply. If there's no demand, there'll be no supply. If there are millions of people being trafficked, then there are millions of people who want them to be trafficked, who want to have sex slaves. This is disgusting. Think about how many evil people there really are in the world. And the devil is laughing. Sick pedophiles and people looking at porn as well. You think there's no connection? Of course there is. And then, you know, I can't just, I can't believe that there are so many people out there who want, who wants to look at little kids naked, molest them and rape them. It is disgusting. It is sick. There is a sickness within humans and it is called the fleshly nature. And some have given themselves over to their fleshly desire so much so that they They've seared with a hot iron their conscience so they don't even care about it anymore. They don't care about these innocent little children. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared. And Romans 1 verse 28 says, And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind 
to do what ought not to be done. These people in powerful positions want to hide their sin, where it festers and grows. And it is time that you shine your light and expose them. And if there are people who are struggling with porn addiction, then please watch this video here and it will definitely help you out. And if you are curious about how these evil people want to control the world and are controlling the world, then watch this video here and I'll see you there. And always remember that life is short, so don't waste yours, where you live in darkness or you're sitting on the sidelines. Cheers, guys.